welcome back in today's lecture onwards i will start new module on characterization of polymers and in today's lecture i will focus on polymers in solution and these are the topics which i will cover in today's lecture now first question is why do we need to study polymers in solution now most of the polymer characterization techniques which we will learn in coming lectures for example molecular weight measurement molecular weight distribution molecular dimensions overall compositions basic chemical structure and detailed microstructure they are mostly carried out in dilute solution when i say dilute means it is approximately less than 2% to weight by volume in the solution another reason is that many of the applications of polymers are in solution i have given you some of the examples of these type of applications in earlier lectures and of course this may not be directly relevant to our course but bio macromolecules like proteins nucleic acids their function mainly in aqueous environment and understanding of their solution behavior is a must to understand the function of proteins and nucleic acids let me begin with thermodynamics of polymer solution a solution can be defined as a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances and when it is when i say homogeneous mixture that means i mean to say mixture at molecular level which means if i collect samples from different part of the solution the molecular composition of different parts will be same and at usual thermodynamic condition of constant temperature and pressure for a two component system for example a solute and a solvent the spontaneous formation of solution requires that the gives free energy of the system after mixing which is represented as g12 should be less than the summation of gives free energy of the individual components now going forward we will generally represent one for the solvent component and two for the solute component in the solution or the gives free energy of mixing at constant temperature and pressure should be less than 0 and from our basic knowledge of thermodynamics at constant temperature and pressure we can represent gives free energy of mixing as enthalpy of mixing minus t entropy of mixing which must be less than 0 to form the solution spontaneously now let's begin with the ideal solution of small molecules an ideal solution is a mixture of molecules having identical size which means mole fraction is equal to the volume fraction and delta vm which is the change in volume on mixing is zero that means whatever the volume was before mixing is same after mixing as well and the forces acting between the two like molecules are same as the forces acting between the unlike molecules so if you talk about solvent and a solute system then the forces between solute molecules are same as the forces between solvent molecules so as i said that i will represent 
1 for the solvent and 2 for the solvent solute. So, 1 1 interactions are of same energies as 2 2 and 1 2 they are all same. So, in effect this means that enthalpy of mixing is 0 or we call this as a a thermal mixing and as a result of this a thermal mixing there is no change in translational vibrational rotational entropy associated with the molecules as well as there is no change in entropy of intermolecular interactions of the components upon mixing. So, the entropy of mixing comes only from the combinatorial part of the entropy. We also call this as configurational entropy in some text. So, in Gibbs free energy of mixing the delta S mixing in case of ideal solution of small molecules comes only from the combinatorial entropy. Now, let us discuss how to calculate this combinatorial entropy for small molecules leading to ideal solutions and for that lattice theory was proposed earlier and combinatorial entropy of the system is given by the number of possible distinguishable special arrangements and for a given state we know the Boltzmann equation which is given by this expression S is entropy, K is Boltzmann constant and W or sometimes is expressed as omega is a number of possible distinguishable degenerate. Degenerate means states of equal energy. So, this is W is the number of possible distinguishable degenerate arrangements in this case. So, this 3 D lattice model for ideal solution we have a 3 D matrix in this screen it is only represented as, as 2 D here, but you can imagine that there are cells coming out of this computer screen as well as there are cells behind the computer scenes you can imagine that it is a 3 D structure, but for simplicity I am showing as a through 2 D structure here. Now, the total number of cells in this lattice is the total number of molecules which is represented as n naught and size of each cell is equal to the size of one molecule of the solvent or solute because we have considered for ideal solution they are same. Now, when we have this lattice filled up with two components one the shown here with the red circles are for solutes as I said earlier that we generally represent solutes by number 2 and this green ones as solvent molecules. The number of solute molecules are given by N 2 and number of solvent molecules are given by N 1. So, total number of molecule is capital N 1 plus N 2. So, N 0 is the total number of cells in this lattice and because there is no preference or there is no interaction between the no preferred interaction between solvent and solute molecules we can place the solvent and solute molecules randomly in these cells. So, the combinatorial entropy will be given by the entropy after mixing 
which is given by KLN WM and so this is a plus sign there is a mistake here. KLN WM and the entropy before mixing is given by ln w1 and ln w2 whereas w1 is coming from the solvent molecules and this term which is giving the entropy corresponds to the solute molecules now if this lattice was filled up with only solute molecules with only red circles then how many different ways we can arrange how many different distinguishable ways we can arrange these circles it would be only one because no matter how many interchange between these circles you make you will always land up with the same arrangement because they are all red circles. So, W2 would be equals to 1. Similarly, if this lattice is filled up with only solvent molecules or green circles, then also we will have W is equals to 1 because we will have only one distinguishable arrangement irrespective of how many number of exchanges or interchange we do between these circles within this lattice. So, W1 would be also equals to 1 and W2 also will be equals to 1. So, Wm would be given by the number of ways we can arrange this n plus 1 2 molecules and we can remove the arrangements which are done by interchange between the similar molecules. So, we get the number of distinguishable arrangements can be possible from N1 solvent molecules and N1 N1 solute molecules and N1 solvent molecules will be given by this expression and so the combinatorial entropy for this mixture is given by this expression. We can do some mathematical derivation from this to this I am not going into detail in mathematical derivations. Now, in this expression N1 is the number of moles of solvent molecules which is given by number of molecules divided by Avogadro number, N2 is the number of moles of solute molecules and X1 is given is given by this expression which is nothing but mole fraction of solvent molecules and X2 is the mole fraction of solute molecules. Now, that was in the case of ideal solution. Now, most of the solutions are non-ideal and there could be three types of non-ideal solutions possible. One is a thermal where delta H m or enthalpy of mixing is 0, but entropy of mixing is not same as ideal solution. Second possibility is just the reverse where delta S mixing is same as ideal solution, but enthalpy of mixing is not equals to 0 and the third is irregular where both are not same as ideal solution. Now, most of the cases sol small molecules they differ from ideality because of non-athermal mixing or 
in another way that enthalpy of mixing is not equals to 0. For example, if we mix water with ethanol, we will get non ideal behavior because of delta H m not equals to 0. In case of polymer solution, non ideality is generally due to both non thermal mixing delta H m not equals to 0 and contribution from other contribution in entropy other than the contrib combinatorial uh, effect. So, basically there could be other entropies which will also contribute in delta S mixing for polymer solutions. Vapor pressure of polymer solution are invariably much lower than what is predicted from Raoult's law. So, we will now discuss the lattice theory for solutions of polymers and we recall that for ideal solutions for small molecules we had identical size of the components and there was no preference of interaction between like and unlike molecules. So, we had delta V mixing is 0 and delta H mixing is 0 as well. Now, in case of polymers solutions, these two assumptions are not accurate and these two scientists Paul Flory and Maurice Huggins, they actually deduce a theory for thermodynamics of polymer solutions considering the large differences in the size of solutes in this case polymers and the solvent molecules in a polymer solution and also existence of intermolecular be interactions between the solute or the polymer molecules and solvent molecules. So, they basically consider these two non ideal situation and derived a equation for polymer solution. So, as I mentioned these are the two possible deviation reason for deviation of deviation from ideality for polymer solution. So, in first case we will consider that this is a this is ok that the polymer solution is delta H you know it contrib does not contribute anything on delta H mixing. We will only first consider the effect of large differences in the size of solute in this case polymer and solvent molecule. Now, for this the they consider the Flory, uh, Flory and Huggins they consider that the polymer molecules to be chains of segments and each segments being equal in size to the solvent molecule. So, that they basically consider that a polymer chain is consist of several segments of equal length and each segment have same volume as the volume of a solvent molecule. So, the number of segment in one polymer molecule is given by V 2 m divided by V 1 m where V 2 m is the volume of one polymer molecule or molar volume of polymer divided by this, this is the volume for one solvent molecule or one mole of solvent molecule as we consider in case of polymers as well. So, this is molar volume of polymer and this one is molar volume of solvent. So, x is proportional to the degree of polymerization, but not necessarily equal to the degree of polymerization for that particular polymer. Now, if I 
consider N2 is the number of polymer molecules, then total number of segments present in the solution, total number of polymer segments present in the solution is given by x n2, x is the number of segment for one polymer and n2 is the total number of polymer molecules. So, this is the total number of polymer segments in solution. Now, if I have n1 number of solvent molecules, then I need to construct a lattice with a total number of this many cells plus in one cells, then we can fill all these cells with either a solvent molecule or a polymer segment. So, we can construct a lattice 3D lattice having n 0 or n naught number of cells and each of these cells will be filled with either a solvent molecule or a polymer segment. So, the total number of cells in this 3D lattice will be given by n 1 number of solvent molecules plus total number of polymer segments present in the solution. Now, if we have a solvent molecule in this lattice. Next solvent molecule I can place anywhere. So, I can place it here or I can place it here or I can place next to the existing solvent molecule. So, basically the number of ways I can place this second solvent molecule depends on the number of free cells present in the in this lattice. There is no bias that it has to be placed in particular area in these 3 D cells. But in case of polymer, if I have a segment placed in this particular cell, then the next cell I cannot place it somewhere here or somewhere here because the next segment has to be connected with the first segment. So, I can only place the second segment in the neighborhood cells which is given by. So, it can be placed in any of this neighboring cell. So, let us say I am placing it here. So, the number of neighboring cells is given by the coordination number in this particular case and we generally represent the coordination number as z. So, this second segment can only be placed among the available cells which is in the neighborhood of the first segments. So, the third can be placed in the vicinity of second and so on. So, we can make this for place the polymer. So, with keeping that in mind and the two assumption that the polymer solutions are dilute in nature the concentration is less than 20 gram per dm cube and another approximation which is called mean field approximation where it is assumed that the segments of polymer molecules which are already present in the lattice they are distributed uniformly in the lattice ok. They are not localites in some part of the lattice, but they are uniformly distributed. So, if we consider these two assumption, then we can deduce the expression for the entropy of mixing for a polymer solution. 
Now, again for the solvent molecules, because they are of identical molecules, W1 is 1 as we discussed earlier, but for polymer molecules, W2 is greater than 1 because each polymer molecule can adopt many different conformations. And as a result, we can have many distinguishable special arrangements of the sequence of segments. Hence, W2 is not equals to 1 in this case, but it is much larger than 1. So, when we consider the enthalpy entropy of mixing, again we consider the expression and so in this case W1 is 1, so this will be 0. So, we will have the expression K L N W M minus K L N W 2. Now, in this case, the model is derived by Florian Hagen such a way that they found out the number of ways each polymer sample uh, segment can be introduced in the lattice where the lattice was partially filled with some of the polymer molecules. Then if this segment has to be placed, then it has to be placed in the vicinity of this segment. And how many number of these cells totally available? is z, but out of that z number of neighboring cells, some are already occupied with existing polymer segments. Now, so it can be only placed in the free neighborhood cells and that free neighborhood number of free neighborhood cells will be given by z minus 2, one this side and another the other side multiplied by the volume fraction of the polymer molecules present in the system. So, when a fresh segment is introduced in the cell, the number of ways it can in be introduced within the cell is proportional to z minus 1, z minus 2 multiplied by the volume fraction of the polymer molecule. Now, I am not going in the detailed process of derivation of Flory Hawkins equation, but I am straight going to the expression they have derived for entropy of mixing, which is given by this expression. In case of small molecules we had mole fraction. Now, in this polymer solution instead of mole fraction we have volume fraction. So, phi 1 and phi 2 are the volume fractions of solvent and polymer molecules respectively in the solution. So, N 1 is the number of moles of solvent molecules, N 2 is the number of moles of polymer molecules and phi 1 is the volume fraction of solvent and phi 2 is the volume fraction of the polymer molecules. So, this is the expression for the combinatorial entropy for a polymer solution derived by Flory and Huggins. Why this is combinatorial? Remember, we till now we are assuming that delta H m or enthalpy of mixing is 0. That means, the only contribution to this entropy of mixing comes from combinatorial entropy. So, now we, we have discussed that we, we have considered the first factor. Now, let us consider that 
this is also not true. So, we need to consider this factor as well and because delta h m is not equals to 0, then this will not only contribute with a value for enthalpy of mixing in the Gibbs free energy, but because of intermolecular interaction there will be some contribution in the entropy of mixing as well because of this intermolecular interaction. Now, in, in the original theory by Florian and Huggins, it was only it was considered only in terms of enthalpy change, but later it was modified in recognition that there must be an entropy change associated with the non-randomness in, in the induced by the interaction between polymer and solvent molecules. And we also consider the interactions only among the neighborhood molecules, first neighborhood interactions only on the basis that the forces between uncharged molecules are known to decrease rapidly with their distance of separation. Now, if you consider the, this and without going again without going into the derivation part the entropy of mixing was derived by the two scientists as represented by this expression where chi is polymer solvent interaction parameter a dimensional temperature dependent parameter which is also which is not dependent on concentration. Now, z is the coordination number as I discussed and this delta small g 1 2 is the change in contract contact gives free energy as a result of contact between solvent and polymer molecule. This is Boltzmann constant and this is absolute temperature. So, if we consider the delta this is the uh, equation for delta g m at constant temperature then we can express delta g mixing for polymer solution in these two parts. So, this is the part which represent the effect of combinatorial entropy which is always negative. These are fraction volume fraction. So, this term is negative which means this term always favors mixing which is expected because mixing will always increase the number of ways two molecules can be arranged in a mixture. And the second term represent the effect of enthalpy and entropy change due to polymer solvent contact. And this basically decides whether a mixing will happen, a polymer and solvent will mix to form a solution or not. If it is less than 0 obviously then it will form a solution, if it is positive and very high value then there will be no mixing because this will be more positive than this negative number which will make delta G mixing as positive term. And if it is positive and small then obviously it will depend on the value of this this part. So, basically this is the term value of which uh, basically will depend uh, will determine whether a polymer solvent uh, will mix to form a polymer solution. Now, with this I will stop here and in the next class I will discuss the utility or usefulness of this uh, Clory-Huggins equation as well as deficiency of 
Flory Huggins equations and I will also derive expression for other thermodynamic quantities.